Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday, June 12th. Here we are looking at the Atlantic. Still pretty quiet, not much going on in the tropics, and uh, will continue to be quiet for the next several days at least, but it is going to turn a bit wetter in uh, this region of the world next week as the MJO starts to come back into our area of the world. You can already see convection starting to show up in the monsoon trough in the eastern Pacific, uh, starting to intensify as the MJO gets closer and uh, will ramp up the eastern Pacific first. They may get a storm out of this pattern and then it's going to come into this region in the Gulf of Mexico and Northwest Caribbean and perhaps the Bahamas area are all going to start getting more active in terms of thunderstorm activity and we will have to be watching for things to start happening down there. Here's the MJO forecast uh, starting from the 10th. You can see it right now is racing like a mad horse across the Pacific. And this is giving the models some trouble, I think, with seeing this pattern. They've been very on and off with any kind of tropical development in the Atlantic side. Uh, and the models differ from each other quite a bit. But you can see the forecasts for the MJO at least are in good agreement. We have the GFS and the UK met very close together over here on the left. And the European has a weaker pulse as it usually does, probably more realistic, but still a fairly strong one getting into phase phase one here and all of these in very good agreement you can also see that it slows down and stalls out in phase one here uh, phase one supports upward motion in the western part of the Atlantic Ocean and the and the eastern Pacific and uh, this is the kind of pattern that in June you need because the MJO is usually needed to support early season development before conditions are quite ideal and uh, the fact that it's stalling out in this phase here in the next 8 to 15 days means that we need to be watching in uh, the typical early season breeding grounds we have the Canadian model at day 10 here supporting this idea with a storm showing up in the western Gulf of Mexico in 10 days. It's been on and off with this last couple days. It's been showing this in the Gulf, but the other models aren't as excited. We have the no gaps that brings another storm up into the eastern Gulf. The GFS has been not really uh, excited about development on the operational run, so the ensemble means continue to show lowering pressures in the Gulf of Mexico during that period, and the European has also been on and off with any kind of development. Last night's run, the most recent one, did not show a closed low developing, but again, lowering of pressures was present. And again, these models will probably continue to struggle until the MJO slows itself down and settles into a more consistent pattern in phase one. Now here's the European Ensemble 500 millibar anomaly forecast for the 6 to 10 day period going into late next week. And uh, notice that the big ridge shows up over southeast Canada. It starts out over here over Hudson Bay and the Great Lakes and starts progressing eastward in here. And normally when these things uh, move like this across the northern U.S. and southern Canada, you have to watch underneath of them for forced convergence that can help air pile up in this region of the world and uh, cause tropical development in the early part of the season. Notice that we have a trough over here in in southwest Canada and the northwest United States with the ridge off to the east and uh, this is an interesting pattern in that it, I noticed it looks very similar to tropical storm Allison in 1989 when it formed in the northwest Gulf and came up into Texas and then got blocked and caused a lot of rainfall coming back and then eventually moving out also very similar to Allison of 2001 which is perhaps more well known formed also got blocked over Texas in the same region and then came out to the east northeast very very similar similar storms and in a very similar pattern and in fact if we take the composite 500 millibar anomaly from the days that each of those storms forms together notice that we have the ridge showing up for the northeast US the trough in the west and the ridge over the northeast Pacific very similar to the pattern that we have on the European ensemble forecast for the next six to ten days. Now if we take this a step further and go actually look at these storms individually, here's 1989 when Allison formed in the northwest gulf here. You can see her down here. This The shaded colors are the 500 millibar heights, not anomalies but the actual heights, and the white lines here are the 1,000 millibar geopotential heights, which are a proxy for sea level pressure, which is a parameter not available with this plotting system. Uh, but you can see her down here. This is June 26th, 1989. Notice that we have the trough coming into the northwestern part of the United States into the Midwest, and then we have this uh, ridge that's moving across the northeastern U.S., and you can see Allison coming up, getting a uh, 
picked up by this trough and moving up into Texas here. Now if we go to three days later and look at the 29th, notice what happens. Notice that we have a retrogression in the pattern, meaning that things move a little bit backwards. The trough retrogrades to out over the Pacific. The ridge moves back over the northern plains here, and a trough dips down into the northeast US, blocking Allison underneath the ridge and forcing her back down towards the south, which is what caused flooding rains in Texas. Similarly, if we look at 2001, when Allison here in 2001's Allison developed on June June 6th, you can see her down here, and uh, you can see the trough that's trying to dig into the northwest part of the United States. Again, you have the ridge moving across the lakes, coming towards the east, and then if we go three days later to June 9th, you can see that the trough has retrograded back off the coast. You have the ridge coming back over the Rockies, and again, a trough trying to retrograde back into the northeast U.S., and again, Allison gets blocked, very similar to 1989, and causes the famous heavy rainfall in eastern Texas and western Louisiana and uh, eventually gets out of here but is in general blocked. Now if we look at both of these very similar patterns, if we look at the Canadian Ensemble forecast for day 9 here, notice that we have a trough getting into the northwest northwestern part of the United States and a ridge moving across the northeastern United States and Great Lakes, very similar to when we had Allison in 1989 here in 2001 with a very similar setup. And then if we go out to day 13, notice that the trough retrogrades back off the coast, the ridge comes back over the plains, and a trough tries to dip into the northeast U.S., very similar to the pattern when we had both of these Allisons over here. And it's interesting because it would make sense to have this kind of a thing happen where you can see the ridges off here. There's a ridge in the Bahamas and a ridge over Mexico. In between, underneath this ridge in here, we have to watch for mischief in the Gulf of Mexico as the MJO supplies the upward motion necessary for thunderstorms to grow and uh, it very well may be that we try to have something develop fairly close to the coast and fairly quickly one of those quick hitting tropical storms like the Allisons that formed there and that would also be supported by the models being on and off with the activity and only showing development north of 20 north they don't really show a lot of development in the Caribbean they show it in the Gulf which would make sense given this pattern and then it would try to come in probably to the north or north northwest feeling the pull of this trough out to the west and then as the MJO comes across the equator what tends to happen is uh, troughiness likes to follow to the north and west of pulses of MJO upward motion that move across the equator so it would make sense to have this trough retrograde westward into the northeastern US as upward motion starts moving through the Caribbean and progressing eastward with time as the MJO enters phase one which support the retrogressive pattern very very similar to when we had our Allisons where the ridge and the trough out here move westward after Allison forms and moves into Texas. Very, very similar storms showing up again. The ghost showed up in 2001. She may show up again. We may have to watch for the ghost of Allison in this kind of a pattern where we have a quick hitting storm that tries to develop of homegrown nature in the Gulf of Mexico and move into the North Gulf Coast. Don't know if it'll be Texas. Don't know if it'll be somewhere else. But this kind of a pattern you can see has happened before and may happen again later next week and perhaps the week after. And we will keep an eye out for that and we shall see what happens. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.